The Monopoly Man, how Bernard Arnold dominated luxury fashion. Bernard Arnold, the kingmaker of the fashion industry, who took dozens of bankrupt brands under his wing and became the richest man in the world. But how exactly did he become the one-man army in luxury fashion? Let's find out. Welcome to Playlux Media. Consistent Acquisitions It might surprise you that at first, LVMH wasn't really a luxury fashion brand to begin with. It started off as a civil engineering company, and as Bernard got more success in capital, he realized that he could actually expand this to be a fashion brand. He used some innovative strategies in his business, and when the time was right, he acquired his first luxury fashion brand called Financier Agache back in 1984. At that time, the big names in luxury fashion didn't pay any heed to Bernard. They thought that he'll lose all his money by investing in bankrupt brands and will go back to civil engineering. But that's where they made a massive mistake and gave the monopoly of the fashion world to Bernard Arnold. His idea of creating a luxury brand group didn't seem very practical at the beginning because no one really attempted it before. However, Bernard started off by acquiring Financier Agache because its parent company was going bankrupt. The French government didn't want the company to go out of business, so Bernard also got a lot of support while he acquired it at a very low cost. Bernard Arnault knew that the business was undervalued and was bound to succeed sooner or later. In the upcoming years, Bernard realized that luxury fashion has a lot of potential, so he kept acquiring new businesses. He later got majority shares of Sephora, Dior, Tiffany & Co, Marc Jacobs, Louis Vuitton, and even Dom Perignon. By acquiring these luxury brands at the right time, Bernard secured his name as the monopoly man in the luxury fashion industry. Within a decade, all of his acquired brands became the mainstream faces of fashion and made Bernard a billionaire. Focused on luxury brands. All the celebrities on the internet flaunt their luxury goods these days, and most of these products are from the brands owned by Bernard Arnold. So we can only imagine how rich the man is. But why is he not putting money on fast fashion brands? Well, Bernard tapped into the luxury fashion market long before it was even cool. He realized that fast fashion doesn't have stability, while luxury goods develop a strong connection with the people. So he started buying different luxury brands with a really long history. Most of the brands he bought were iconic names at the time, but were struggling financially. So Bernard supported them, invested his own money and took loans to manage the flow of cash. Soon, the brands he bought actually started doing great. Once the profits started reeling in, Bernard Arnold expanded and grew the businesses, opening their stores worldwide and making them more accessible and yet highly exclusive. Like most billionaires these days, Bernard didn't invest in unknown names and make them huge. He actually invested in brands that already had a long history with the consumers. He knew that the consumers already have an emotional connection with the brand. Then, he used that already established brand image to his advantage. Bernard Arnold has always been after the star brands, the ones with a really long legacy, and that's how he has managed to add his name as the giant in luxury fashion, because he basically owns some of the biggest names, like Dior, Fendi, and Hermes. Understanding the psychology of the buyer. Bernard Arnold always knew that his buyers aren't gonna be lounging and watching ads to be influenced by the brand. So he didn't put an overwhelming amount of money on marketing from the very beginning. Instead, he focused on providing high quality goods to his consumers because he knew that they were looking for really unique and quality pieces. For instance, if you spend $10,000 on a luxury bag, would you want to walk down the street and see 10 other people wearing the same bag? Well, most people would never want that. And this is the reason why all the brands owned by Bernard only produce a limited stock of very high quality goods. You might have heard about the old money aesthetic, right? Bernard Arnold focuses on providing his consumers everything they need to look like they've got generational wealth. It's the reason why his designs are never tacky or cheap. They always look timeless because Bernard keeps a really close check on not just his designs, but everything from manufacturing to deliveries. Bernard also knows that just one loyal customer can get him business of thousands or even millions of dollars. 
so he does everything to understand and mould his products according to how customers want it. Also, if you have a ton of money, you would obviously want to feel important, right? But most brands never really make their consumers feel special. But with Bernard's brands, there's a very exclusive list of people who could buy their products, and people actually have to develop connections and spend a ton of money only to get on the good books of these brands. And once your name is on the list, you can flaunt it to the world like there's no tomorrow. And that's actually what most millionaires want, to be part of a very exclusive club that only caters to them. Futuristic business model. Bernard has a very advanced business model and he isn't stuck in his old ways. For instance, would you prefer to buy from a huge retail store or an organic and niche brand that uses locally sourced products? Well, most people would pick the niche brands because they're more sustainable and most of them are very inclusive. Bernard always sees ahead of his time and that's probably why he's slowed down his acquisitions. Most luxury brand owners aren't even willing to sell their equity these days and instead they prefer to take loans. So finding good brands to invest in is getting harder. But Bernard has recently said that LVMH is only at the beginning of its journey. It means that he has a solid plan for what's about to come. And because of this futuristic model, the billionaire has managed to stay on top of his game. Bernard Arnold is now investing in digital companies because he understands that technology is the future. One such company is Aura. It's a tech startup relating to the fashion industry as it keeps a close check on all luxury goods and even prevents counterfeit items from being released. This company also makes it really easy for consumers to find the material, manufacturing and other details of their favorite goods. So it seems like Bernard is now going for a digital model of his business and he has got a solid business plan up his sleeve as always and other luxury brands are still trying to catch up to him. His monopoly is so massive that other brands can't even imagine competing with him because of how effective his strategies are and how he's always ahead of his time. Influencer Marketing Bernard Arnold didn't join the influencer marketing train for the longest time. He took his time and tried studying the influencer industry. It's mainly because he didn't want to jump into something that wasn't going to last a long time. And by 2019, he realised that influencers are here to stay. A research also got published around the same time that the youth is most likely to buy products recommended by YouTubers and influencers. So it was inevitable for Bernard to embrace influence marketing, but he didn't randomly hire dozens of influencers just to start trending on the platforms. He knew that being part of any trend isn't his niche. Bernard wanted to create trends. It's the reason why he only collaborated with two influencers in the beginning. He nitpicked them because their content is aligned with LVMH products. Bernard also realised that people aren't going to make Dior hauls or Fendi hauls like they do of Shein because obviously his products are very luxury and high-end. So he started this trend of old money vibe where most people wore statement pieces from luxury fashion brands and this way his brands weren't only promoted but people also got styling tips from top influencers. Bernard Arnold didn't want to do tacky marketing, and that's why his marketing strategy stands out from the crowd. Even when he collaborated with influencers, it was a very subtle promotion and didn't feel too on the nose. It's mainly because people already know that all of Bernard's brands are established names in luxury fashion, and tacky would be the last thing they expect from him. With influencer marketing, Bernard is moving towards a way younger customer base because he knows what Gen Z could do for his business. And considering how everyone wants to appear rich on Insta and TikTok these days, his brands are actually doing really well. Patience is key. Bernard Arnold got to the top of the luxury fashion pyramid, but he also made his fair share of mistakes. He once owned a makeup brand, but he didn't know the highs and the lows of the industry yet. So when things got a little rough, he sold this makeup business. Bernard says that it was his biggest mistake because he didn't understand the industry at that time. He never repeated the same mistake again and decided to always be patient with his investments. For a long time, Bernard didn't try his hand on any makeup brand. He studied the market and realized that it might take time to get a return on his capital. Once he was confident, he acquired Sephora. This makeup retail store started from one or two locations and became the biggest makeup selling platform in the world. Sephora is now worth more than $10 billion and it's all because Bernard was very patient with his investment. 
He has applied the same technique to all his luxury brands, and if he invests in something, he doesn't get too impatient. This is something that sets him apart from the crowd. Other luxury brands also tried acquiring multiple companies and becoming a luxury fashion group, but when things went south, they instantly sold those companies. Bernard has always remained steadfast with his investments, and even if the stock decreases, he knows that it's going to get back on his feet. A reason for this confidence is that he hardly ever invested in new luxury fashion companies in the past. He put all his money on brands that had a legacy and a solid customer base. Entrepreneurial Spirit Most billionaires become CEO of their companies and forget about innovation because they make a perfect business model. However, Bernard is an entrepreneur by all means. It's reported that he asks everyone in his company to treat the LVMH group like a startup. So if anyone gets a new idea about giving a new direction to the brand, they can talk to Bernard, and he actually considers everyone's ideas. He has never stopped being an entrepreneur and always looks for ways to expand his business. It might feel like he has reached his peak by this point, but Bernard thinks that he has only hit the tip of the iceberg by now. So he tries to find new and innovative ideas to reach the younger demographic. It's the entrepreneurial spirit of Arnold that constantly kept him awake at night, and he continued to acquire some of the biggest names in luxury fashion. If he wasn't a true entrepreneur, he would have stopped after acquiring LVMH and focused on expanding it. But he kept diving into new companies and building them from scratch. Although the pace of acquisition isn't as fast now, Arnold still has a lot of luxury fashion companies at his target, and he might even acquire them in the near future. So if you were among the five richest men in the world, would you have kept working and hustling like Arnold? Tell us in the comments. Best Creative Team In all of Bernard's brands, what really stands out is the creative team and designers. They're the reason Bernard Arnold is dominant over the entire fashion industry. There are a few lessons Bernard learned early on that helped him build a long-term team. He knew that if he wants to maintain consistent quality, he needs artists and craftsmen that are here for the long run. Also, Arnold never really interfered with his designers. He kept an eye over stuff but didn't nitpick anything they were doing. Whether it was the Dior designer or the creative director of Fendi, everyone had their creative freedom to make the most iconic pieces in luxury fashion. Bernard knew that if he micromanaged everything, he couldn't create a new Picasso. So, the control was in the hands of designers and Bernard sat back and just analysed everything. Also, the team didn't have to worry about constant scrutiny or budget cuts from Bernard's side, so they were truly free to create, and it actually helped start the new era for luxury fashion. First Mover Advantage Arnold always had the first mover advantage in everything. It's because he doesn't follow the trend. He doesn't create what everyone wants to wear. For instance, amid this Barbie trend, everyone from Zara to Shein launched their collections on Barbie. But did you see Dior launching a line dedicated to Barbie? Well, it's Arnold's specialty that he doesn't become part of the trend. He is the trend. His business model is based on creating pieces that customers desire, and his customer base is also way too exclusive to follow any trends because they want to carry exclusive pieces made in limited numbers. It's not like you can't live without buying a Fendi or Louis Vuitton bag, but almost everyone has this desire to own a bag with the LV logo. It has actually become a status symbol, and it never goes out of style. And Darnold did all this by creating a desired element in his brand, so people think of his products as huge accomplishments. Once he managed to do that, no one stood a chance before him, and he completely dominated the luxury fashion industry. And now, it feels essential to at least own one Louis Vuitton bag or Fendi product after becoming a millionaire, and what we call fear of missing out, that Bernard created in the market. So, what are your thoughts about the witty business strategies of Bernard by which he monopolized the entire industry? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care and thanks for watching.